we actually have a long way to go before we have truly green building. Now, I also see green building as 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 one of bio-integration. Essentially, if we're able to integrate everything that we make as human beings, and that's our built environment. Built environment is not just buildings, but it's the bridges, toys, refrigerators, and everything that you have uh, uh, and uh, with the natural environment in a seamless and benign way that there won't be any environmental problems. And so, of course, it's easier said than done, and how to achieve it is the biggest challenge confronting us as ecological designers. And to me, there are three levels of integration. Physical integration means integrating with existing features and ecology of, of, the, of locality. A systemic integration is integrating with the ecological systems and the atmospheric processes in, uh, around the Earth. And temporal means the integrating with rate of consumption and renewable resources. Now, here's a poor girl with an artificial arm. What she has is what you call a prosthetic arm on the left on the left hand side. And so this arm has to integrate with those organic hosts. And so what you see here is this poor gentleman who's got prosthetic devices all over his body, and that you know he has the um, prosthetic de um, device, um, he has a prosthetic leg, uh, and that this prosthetic device has to interface, has to integrate well with this host organism, which is the human body. And so this integration, if you like, in this particular case, is the physical integration because there's no systemic integration. It's just you know, mechanical integration between um, the lake and the human body. Now, but by analogy, our buildings are equivalent to prosthetic device, with the device of this prosthetic device with human being, and the equivalent of the host organism um, is our biosphere. So everything centers around successful biointegration of what we make as human beings with the biosphere. And so, as I mentioned earlier on, there are three levels of integration. Physical integration with the ecology location, system integration with the processes in the nature, and temporal, temporal integration with, with the rate of use of resources. And so here's different rates of integration. Here's another poor gentleman with two funny legs, and one so integrate with the knee, the other one integrate with his thigh, and so they're doing types of integration devices. Now, if you take the most sophisticated prosthetic device that you can find in the marketplace, which is the artificial heart, then what you begin to realize is that we are a long way before we get a true integration between what we make as human beings and the organic host. Because the, you know, if you take the best artificial heart you can get in the marketplace from Walmart, <laughs> you've, you've, sorry, pardon, sorry. Well, I should say Tesco. Sorry. Uh, um, then you find that uh, um, that the most sophisticated artificial heart still uses external sources of energy. And so, you know, we still haven't invented a heart, an artificial heart, that, that, can, um, that can use the energy from the human body. On top of that, the energy that is, that, that, that is used in artificial heart, you know, is, has to be used to operate the motor, and that motor itself gives out energy. And so it's a much more complex thing to do than to try and integrate the artificial heart with the human heart. And what you see on the right-hand side is, is a sort of uh, um, a device with electrodes that you can insert to the brain so that you can actually 